Hello everyone. Um, so this video here will go through uh, an example of uh, linear scheduling for grid projects. So here we have uh, uh, a housing project that consists of uh, 21 houses. So our n, the number of units, is 21 houses, and we need to finish it them uh, by 74 uh, uh, working days. Um, the the table shows that repetitive uh, f f uh, five activities that we have in each unit or in each house and we see also that there is a minimum of uh, one day uh, buffer between uh, each one of these activities so total will be four buffers um, so like we learned in the lecture um, we first need to calculate uh, what we call t1 and T1 would be the total CPM duration of one unit, how long one unit would take. So we have five activities, we add the durations, and most of the people do that, and they forget actually about the buffer between these activities. So like I said, you have uh, five activities, so there are, there are four buffers between them. Um, so total now, a, each unit, if you do these activities, back to back with the buffers, it will take 24 days. So considering now that we have a T1, also in the lecture we kind of showed this formula for the desired rate of progress through the project. And like we mentioned, it's kind of an estimated rate. It's kind of a guidance value for us to move forward in, in the problem. And we kind of explained in the lecture that uh, you considering that T1 is the CPM duration of uh, one unit. And if you stack all these units, doing them in parallel, we uh, look here at the rate, composite rate of the whole project moving through N minus one units after finishing T1 time. Uh, and you want to finish within TL time, the total uh, time of the whole length, or the in this case, the total number of units that we have um, so this shaded area, shaded triangle, the rate of uh, the, 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 the inclined line here uh, is n minus 1 divided by tl minus t1. So again, it's, a, it's kind of a rough estimate of how fast, how many houses I finish per day. And um, like what does it mean? Because in the first five days, you don't finish any houses uh, because you it takes you 24 days to finish the first house. Uh, if you do it again, things back to back. But again, it's a it's a rough indicator of how fast your project moves overall. So um, to move forward in the problem, and I draw the line of balance diagram, I need to prep values for me to be able to draw the diagram. So this is the table that we're going to use. So I will list all the activities and their duration, and then I will have the following columns, and I'll go through each one of them. So we need to calculate C, D, C, A, R, A, T, and then of course the buffers are given to us, so I'm listing them here to be handy when I look at this table in the next slide and I start drawing the line of Venice uh, diagram. So starting with the, the third column here, CD, which is the required number of crews that are needed to uh, be able to achieve this overall required rate, RD. Um, in the lecture, I tried to explain, but I froze, uh, and I'm explaining it here again, how we came up with this uh, CD value. So uh, for one crew, we will deliver one over D houses per day because uh, if we use one crew, the activity duration will be four in, in the in case of the activity uh, A. So now thinking about how many CD, how many crews CD that are needed to, to deliver RD. And now we will considering the proportional relationship. Uh, so CD will be equal to RD divided by one over D. So it will end, you'll end up with RD times uh, D. So now knowing where the formula comes from, uh, we just need to apply it. So for every activity, multiply its duration, if you use one crew, times the required uh, rate. So for example, the first activity A, uh, D is equal to 4 times the RD of 0.4, we end up with 1.6 crews. 
doing the same formula for the rest of the uh, activities, we end up with some values are integers, some are real numbers uh, with digits. Um, uh, so you cannot use, for example, 1.6 cruise or 0.8, so you have to round up. So CA, the actual cruise that you use, are the round up of CD. So 1.6 will turn into 2, and the rest you can see, we're lucky to have for B the required cruise to be 2, so we'll just stick to 2 in this case. Now, considering now that we rounded up the required number of crews, um, now what would be the actual rate for this activity? Uh, so RA would be equal to CA over CD times RD. And again, kind of similar logic, proportional relationship. Uh, if CD delivers RD, then what would be the RA, the delivered actual rate, if you use CA? So it's a proportional ratio, um, um, and, and you suggest the RD to be RA. So in the first case, uh, first activity, uh, A can, uh, will deliver 0.5 houses per day. And you continue you know, the calculations for all the activities. Uh, you see that because we started with only one rate, RD, but when we applied them uh, this rate on all the activities, you had to round out the crews. So you end up with different progress rate or productivity rate for every activity. So some of them are uh, around uh, following the same value of 0.4, some are more, uh, and actually all of, all of them are more, but, uh, and, and, and this, this has to be, they all have to be uh, more than your RD. Because you're rounding up the crew, so you're increasing productivity. So now you have RA. Uh, the next would be to calculate T. And, and T here uh, is different for every activity. It's the time between the uh, start of the first, uh, the start of the activity in the first unit to the start of the activity in the last unit. Or similarly, you can think of it's the time between the end of the activity in the first unit to the end of the activity of the last unit. Right? And we'll see how we use this value, but we'll calculate it here as, you know the rate of finishing uh, uh, the work for each activity, RA, and now we're looking for N minus one kind of scope of work. So how fast we finish N minus one going with a speed or rate of RA, so it's N minus one over RA. So applying this formula, I have 21 units, so it's always 20 over the rate RA that we have for each activity. So for every activity, we end up with a different T value, which kind of, if you think of it, it's the slope of this activity in the line of balance diagram. And because we are having different rates RA, you will have a different T. So now we have completed this table. We will, because I don't have a space here, but if you have a, a, a paper, you might be able to also to squeeze the line of balance uh, diagram and the and, and the same sheet, but now it's the same table, and I'm gonna follow up or follow it in drawing the line of balance. And to draw the line of balance, like we've seen in the, in the lecture, it uh, looks like a bar chart. So you have the timeline horizontal axis, but the vertical axis is not the activities; it's actually the number of units. So houses here in our case. Now, was the question is how far should I draw the timeline? Uh, you might think the deadline here is, uh, like we have seen, uh, 70, uh, if I remember correctly, going back. So it's uh, 74. Um, but if you think I have to draw the timeline 74, which is the deadline, uh, like we will see, uh, probably will end a little longer than 74, but it's a step towards being within uh, the deadline. So my recommendation is to extend the, uh, the timeline to be above that deadline that you initially started with. Um, you hold on your thoughts a little until the end of this video, we'll, we'll have a pointer for you to think about why we're doing that. Uh, so in, in our case 74, I would say let's draw it all up to 90. And I know because I did this exercise on my own, so I know that 90 will fit the line of balance diagram that I will draw. And the vertical axis will move from 1 to 21 units. So starting with the first activity here, it takes four days to finish activity A in each unit. So in the first unit, it starts from 0 to 4. 
Uh, now I would have drawn this horizontal uh, purple line in every unit, but I'm interested only in the first and the last unit and connecting between them with kind of a slope. Um, kind of a, a, an abstract drawing of all the activities uh, A that happen in all the houses. So looking at now the next value I will look at is and, and um, um, the, the last unit will also take four days but also considering that um, this value here, the 40 T so this value is the difference between the start of the activity in the first unit and the start of, of the activity in the last unit. So it's 0 plus 40, you end up with the last unit will have activity A start at 40 and end at 44. So that, that's basically here a presentation of activity A going through all of these houses. So I don't have to draw 21 horizontal little lines, just the first unit, the last unit, and connecting with this kind of bounding two lines to represent that activity over time and over units. Now I'm done with activity A, moving to the next the, the successor, which in our case here is kind of a series of activities B, A, B, C, D, E. So the next one is B, moving into B. I, I, and to draw B, I have to, to compare the rate of A and B. I see that B is slower than A. It finishes 0.4 houses a day compared to 0.5 houses for A. So knowing that B is slower, so it doesn't have a steeper slope like A, and like we explained in the lecture, imagine this is like a Tetris and B is coming from the right to the left, so where it will hit, considering that it will have a lower rate than A, so it will hit at the bottom. So it will hit A at the bottom, and I have to here to put a one-day buffer, don't forget the buffers that we have between the activities, and this means that activity B will start one day after activity A finishes. So it started at 5, and the duration here is 5, so it ends at 10. So that's the first unit. Looking at T, uh, T uppercase for activity B, which is 50. So I will find out the times that happens for activity B at the last unit to be adding uh, 50 to 5. So it could be 55, and it will end at 60 connect between the, the starts and ends of these activities you have this kind of the representation of activity B. So far so good. So I have done with two activities. The next one kind of following a similar uh, process. But now I see uh, that I have, I'm dealing now with a relative C relative to B is faster. So now it's 0.5 compared to 0.4. Faster means it's a steeper slope. So Tetris, imagine Tetris kind of this C activity is moving from right to left, it will hit at the top. So I have to draw it now from the top, draw the activity at the last unit, and I have one day buffer, so activity B ends at 60. So activity C will start at 61 and adding a duration of 2, 63. And now I'll draw this activity backward to find where this activity starts in the first unit. So uh, considering now it has a T of 40, so 61 minus 40 will be 21, and, and, and this uh, act activity at the first unit will end at 23. Draw the two barrel lines here for C. I have C in the line of balance. Next would be D. So you got the you got the uh, the trick here. Um, compare the productivity rates. So you'll find that two over three is point six six seven faster than point five. So I'm hitting again at the top. You draw the one unit one day uh, buffer. Sixty three is the end of C. So the start of D at the last unit is sixty four with a duration of three. So it ends at sixty seven. Considering that T here is equal to uh, 30, so you go backward uh, with a difference of 30, uh, backward in time. So the first uh, unit for activity B here, the work starts at 34 and ends at 37. Draw the two lines, the bounding lines for activity D, and you're done with activity. The, lo the last activity here is activity E. And comparing the uh, production rate, you find that activity E is slower, so it will hit D now at the first unit. So this is where, where this is the uh, kind of uh, uh, where you're gonna start drawing E. So 
one day buffer between 37 end of D and 38 the start of E and E will finish in the first unit at 44 uh, you know complete or figure out where you're going to finish E at the last unit at 40 uh, it's T so from 38 you will start the last unit at 78 and you'll finish that unit at after six days so you'll finish it at uh, 84 and you draw the two lines and you have here you completed now the line of balance. Very informative way of representing the schedule. Again, I could have drawn uh, the schedule in, in very detail, kind of for every unit, draw uh, its bar, kind of, if you think about it this way. But it's, I, I, it's a simpler representation this way. And I know that within these, uh, the, the bounding lines of every activity, there are little bars for every unit of the work that's being done in it. So now looking at this, um, the last activity of the last unit finishes at 84. Now this is interesting um, because like I said, the, the deadline for this project is 74. So I ended up later than my deadline. Although I used the, this TL in calculating RD, the required rate of progress, and I used RD to figure out the cruise, so I should end up with uh, finishing by 74. So that's a that's a, 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 a question that we'll discuss in class. How did we end up with finishing beyond the deadline? Although we used this deadline value to calculate everything we, we used to draw the line lines. So think about why we ended up with this uh, situation and we'll discuss your thoughts in class. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the class.